This video is going to give you a basic tour of the HomeGage Payments dashboard. So this is a dashboard available to you if you are accepting credit cards um, using HomeGage Payments. First, you'll log in. So this is what the dashboard looks like, and I'm going to take you through each area, and I'll start with the box at the top left corner for Quick Charge. Quick Charge does exactly that. So you can basically take a payment through the HomeGage Payments portal just by putting in the amount, the billing address, and some basic information, and you'll process a payment. That payment is not linked to the HomeGage inspection dashboard. So it doesn't have to be linked specifically to a report. Um, there are some companies that might find a use case for this, so I'm just going to show you an example of how to make a quick charge. After that, we're going to click process payment, and then you can put in your card number and click pay. I also want to point out that um, in the prior screen, you could select the drop down where it shows sale, and you could choose to um, put through an e check um, through this platform. And that was how to do a quick charge. Next, we're going to move on to the next box um, on this main dashboard. You'll see up at the top, there's a chart for today's sales. Um, over to the right, you'll see an account balance and the date of the next withdrawal. Um, a little bit about the withdrawals. So every night, the batch happens between 9 and 9.30 p.m. Eastern. And then the withdrawal or deposit cycle begins between 10 and 10.30 p.m. Eastern. The deposits show up in your account 48 hours in the morning after they've been batched. So just keep that in mind when you're looking at when the next withdrawal happens. Down at the bottom left, we've got our sales and refund chart. You can actually navigate by clicking the drop down and choose different time frames pretty easily. And then over here, you have a funds snapshot. It will just show some quick figures for year to date. Um, you've got month to date and today's date. Along the left hand side, we've got the menu items here that I'll go over. We've got create payment. And that's basically the same thing as quick charge. It's no different. So just looks a little bit different, but you have to enter in the same information. Here, we're gonna to go to payment history. This is where you'll probably spend most of the time if you're in this dashboard at all. Here, you can see every single transaction and what's going on with that transaction in chronological order. You can also filter and sort. So if you hover over a status icon, you'll be able to see what that status means. Look for a support article that details the different icons, their meanings, and definitions. You can click the arrow to drop down to get more information about that transaction or to get full details, click on the dollar value for that transaction. Um, up here at the top is the transaction ID. So if you ever have any kind of issue and you need HomeGage support to look into a specific transaction, just copy that transaction ID at the top and email it to us and we'll know exactly what you're talking about. Over here, it just shows if there's been an AVS match, a CVV match, or if not, it will indicate. The 3DS is something that you don't have to worry about. It doesn't apply to the US. Over here, you've got a couple different buttons, copy transaction, cancel transaction, void, 
transaction, and receipt. Um, these are all available because this transaction hasn't actually gone through the full process um, and has not been captured or settled. It's just still in that approved state, so you have the option to cancel or void it. I'll show you another transaction that actually has been settled where it will have a refund button, and we'll go over that process in just a bit. If you click on transaction, you'll get more details. There's an important part under transaction that you'll find um, valuable, there's a field called description, and when there's actually a payment that comes from the HomeGage dashboard, the description field will populate the report ID with the property address um, in it. And as you go down, there's also more information about the payment under payment details. If I click on fees, you'll see the merchant fees, and you can also click on the drop down arrow, which will expand the merchant fees so you can see the specific fee structure for that particular transaction. Keep in mind, my account I'm using is a fictitious company, so the fees are probably not accurate. Um, so this is just so everybody understands an idea of where things are located. So I'm navigating back to payment history now, uh, just so you can see the different um, ways that you can also work with payments, especially when the payment has settled and maybe you need to do a refund. Now I'm gonna take you through a refund. So this transaction has already been captured. Click into it and you'll see now I have a refund uh, button that I can click on. Once I click on the refund button, I'll be presented with the option to type in my own amount so I can do a partial refund or I can do a full refund. And then all I have to do is click the refund button to uh, finish the process. You'll see here that the Refund is showing as the most recent transaction, and it's showing a negative amount, and then it's been approved. And then that's my original transaction down there at the bottom, the 200. Once that goes through and gets settled, then you'll see like an arrow next to the 200 saying that it was refunded. So now we're just going to go down the list and um, right below that you'll see disputes. That is if somebody is disputing the transaction with their credit card company. Um, hopefully that won't really happen. It's probably not super common in your businesses, but um, this is where you would be alerted of that. Um, and there's a specific process on how to go about and um, resolve that. So we have a support article that goes into that in full detail. And payment returns, that is also to do with disputes. Um, you would see any payment return tracking here. And then right below management, you're going to see users. I'm going to actually skip over that and do a more detailed video of that separately. It's not a super use case for a lot of inspectors, but it might come in useful for some multi-inspector companies. Right now I'm gonna go down to where it says forms and I'll show you an example of how to use invoices and how to add products. Some companies might want to use invoicing through HomeGage payments and not have it connect to the dashboard. Again, not a common use case, but I'll cover it because it's pretty easy to do here, just in case there are some folks who would like to create invoices for some other reason through HomeGage Payments. So first we're gonna go into products because in order to build an invoice, you have to have products um, ready to add. I already have one here that I created ahead of time, but I'm gonna show you it's easy to add a product by clicking Add Product give it a name, here I'm typing in wind mitigation, put in a price, 
You don't really need to use a code or an extra description, but if you feel the need, go ahead. And then basically you just click add. All right, and so now what you can do is you can create an invoice. So we're gonna click on invoices, and then over here, we're gonna to go to the top right corner, and we're gonna click on add invoice. And then here you can fill out the different fields. They're pretty self-explanatory. Um, you don't have to fill out different ones, um, but you do need to give the invoice a title. You can add a custom note. Here you can choose a drop down on when you want it to be paid. So you have several different options and you've got some options on when to send um, the email. So it will send an email with a link for payment. And then you can add your customer details and their email. There's room for an additional email. Here you'll be able to choose the product that you created um, in the last step by clicking on this drop down. And you can also choose a quantity. You can add a billing address if you like, but it's not required because this is going to go through email. Click save and send. So now we're going to look at the withdrawals. So under admin, click withdrawals. This will give you details about the deposits that go to your bank. Down here under Withdrawal History, you'll be able to see um, past um, deposits or pending ones. You can click on um, the ID to expand to more details about that specific uh, withdrawal or deposit. Um, for my account, because it's not an actual real account, it doesn't show much, but you would be able to see any fees that were taken out and the specific transactions that go into that specific withdrawal. So next we're going to go into reporting. So I'll just hit the basics, but there are a lot of different reports. Transaction details is one of them. You can click the drop down to choose a different time frame, like this week or this month, and then click the pink icon to the right to get the report. I'm going to go back one and show you another report that I think would be handy for um, many companies. The disbursement summary that will show all the different deposits that go to your bank account. We can use the drop down and then click the pink icon again. Another report to run would be the disbursement transaction details. That's going to have the cardholder's name, the date, the total, fees associated, and the net. It's the Disbursement TXN Details Report. And then also, we're going to go to the Profit and Loss Statement. That's another report that you'll find handy, and that can get you a total amount of fees that were deducted. So you can do it monthly or weekly or today. Just use the drop down and click the pink button at the right. And just note that all of these reports can be exported to an Excel file or a .csv file if you just click the link at the top right corner. Okay, to round out this, we're going to go to the email alerts. This is where you can toggle on and off different email alerts for certain transactions. You've got email alerts for disbursements or when deposits happen. The next email alerts would be for merchants. This does not really apply to the home inspectors, so you can just kind of skip over that one. And then the next one is going to be chargebacks. The next, we've got transactions. These are going to be about specific transactions. There's a whole list of them. You can definitely toggle those on or off as you see fit. The other two areas for invoices and subscriptions, 
it's the same thing. I don't think many people um, for home inspectors are going to be using the subscription setting, so um, you can probably skip over that one as well. And the final area to show you would be the settings. So in this area, under business settings, you can go in and see the details that you put through when you applied. You can also go in and modify, and same with the user settings. So that's where all your business details will be located and any of your bank account information and things like that. And there you have it. That concludes our tour of the HomeGage Payments Dashboard. Since this video is a general tour of the dashboard, I'll add links below to related Support Center articles that go into more detail around specific functions as we get them published.